it's very important that you understand what it means to follow a line. So if you if you take a piece of um, insulation tape, all right, just put a piece of insulation tape down. At the edge, on, on, put a piece of, say, my black insulation tape on a white piece of paper. You're following the edge of the of the insulation tape on the left hand side. So as your robot's going forward, you're following it on the left hand side. What you're doing when you're following is you're taking multiple measurements, whether you can how much reflected light, and whether it's naught, it's naught, then if you see the color black, then you need to veer off the road. If you take multiple measurements and it's just pure white, pure white, pure white, you've got to go towards the road. Okay, so that is how you follow the line. It's not a magical thing that, that just follows the line. You're actually measuring, and those measurements are then being used to tell the robot which motors to switch off or to bring down the power and which to accelerate. And so it's just about motor manipulation and to make the, and we call it the zigzag. All right. And if your learners can get zigzag right, then they can get anything right. All right. Okay, so let's start with M2, unit two. All right. All right, so so a touch sensor is like you either bump into it or you don't bump into it. That's straightforward. Uh, ultrasonic is you go forward, you either see the obstacle or you don't see the obstacle. And if it's a flat, big flat thing in front of you, you really can't miss it. You've just got to determine the distance. Okay, and if you, if you approach an object, you've got to go slowly as well, just by the way. But anyway, so for ultrasonic, it's just measuring the distance and seeing when you're going to stop. Color sensors is, okay, next. All right, so color sensors allows you to do color, ambient light, and reflected light. And so three, three different functions for these. Okay, so great. So what can you use a color sensor for? You can use the color sensor for sensing, obviously color sensing. Is it red, is it black, is it blue, whatever color it is. Um, and then you've got this reflected light intensity value. So you can use it to detect a line and to follow a line. And then the ambient light is the light that's in your, in your space. So you can say if it gets dark, all the robots must stop moving. So if you typically run a science center and you've got a whole lot of robots playing around on the table, then you say, uh, you program, what do you say? You program the robot that as soon as you switch off the lights in the science center, all the robots will stop moving. Awesome, eh? But they've detected ambience. All right. Otherwise, if you put the put the lights on, then they'll start moving again. It's the same as if you have a um, you build a little a little robot, maybe like a cockroach or something. Okay, and as soon as you put the light, then it runs away in the other direction. It's very much where, where yeah. what you what the what is detected is what will then determine the movement of your robot. Okay, so now we're going to a next step. Um, yes, we had a touch sensor and we had an ultrasonic sensor, but now we've got multiple sensors and they must be on a single robot and they must all be measuring at the same time and they must all be measuring the input um, that's coming. All right. So the input is then used to control the values of repetition and decision making, whatever you've got. But multiple sensors, and you've got to use the data at all times. Okay. So, um, okay, let me get to that just now. All right. So the also in the um, in your document in your overview document, you'll see there's a whole lot of information about a color sensor. So the, uh, the specific color sensor. What is the purpose of the data measurements? Why are you measuring it? For what? To what end? Are you making it so your robot can detect something before it is a calamity or just because it's fun? There has to be a purpose. You can't just measure for no purpose. Then there's the different light measurements that you can make with a color sensor. Okay, so you can either make reflected light, you can do ambient light, you do color light. Okay, and then um, also when is ambient light measurement required? Why? Why bother about that? Okay. Um, what we will touch on just now is to say, how do you calibrate it? So having a robot move under a fluorescent light is very different to having a robot run in a classroom where there maybe is no light, okay? And so that requires different measurements, all right? So as I said just now, the line follow, just your proportional line follow, so it's zigzag, dig, 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 but um, it moves up in proportional. Um, and so it's how much black do you see and how much white do you see is determines how best your robot will move and follow the line quickly. And just FYI, if you go down a straight line, it follows it, it can follow it at a higher speed. But if you're going to go into the loops and follow a line that's all curvy, um, it's best you slow down a little bit. Okay. But that all takes practice. I mean, you just got to do a whole lot of things over and over and over again. Okay. 
Um, again, we've got the linear, we've got repetition, and we've got decision making, and then you, you've got to combine them. Okay, my dog is very angry. So what you have to do is you've got to follow, if you follow a line, you repeat, but you make a decision every time you make a measurement. All right, so I'm going to, we're going to now um, um, put together and make it a compound statement to say, you repeat, but you put the decision, you repeat your decision um, to follow a line. All right. So now there are two objectives. The one is to attach a color sensor for the specific task that you have. All right. And then once you've built the um, attach, well, you've got to attach it rigidly. Once you've attached it, you've got to make sure that the data that's measured is actually the data that you need. And so I'm going to show you port view where you can see what is actually being measured. All right. If anybody asks you, there are three values that your color sensor can detect. And so just also on that, your sensors are electronics. Okay. And I cringe. I absolutely cringe. Um, and I'll show you what, what happens. Is it learners sit, say, with a, uh, an ultrasonic sensor and they sit and play with it instead of just putting the wire in and then they play and then they pull and then this stays electronics. All right. And it does cost. So you also you need to teach your learners to have respect for other people's property. This is not a thing that you can throw around and kick around like a soccer ball. Okay. If you put the wire in, it's got to actually click, click, and then you attach it to the robot. You don't chew this wire. You don't chew the end here. You don't suck on this thing here. You don't pull it apart. Um, if you want your color sensor to detect what it's supposed to detect, this is not the color sensor. This is not ultrasonic. I just can't find my color sensor. For my, oh, there we go. There we go. So if you want your color sensor to detect what you want it to detect, you've got to look after it. Okay. And so I'm encouraging you, um, when you do sensing, you've got to make sure on your port view that the, that the measurements that the sensor measures are the, thing, are the values that you actually want. All right. So if you're looking at color, then the light here is usually multicolor. So it's like, a, I think it's red and blue. All right. If it's ambient, if we're going up and we're trying to find the thing, then it's usually a blue. And if it's reflected light, it's usually a red color. If it's um, shining down, it shines a red light down to be maybe the amount of light reflected. Okay. So there's three, there's three data values that your little color sensor can measure. And it's absolutely amazing. It's freaking amazing. Okay. So how do you attach it? Well, I, I said this now, you've actually got to, the wire it's got to click okay so you've got to have the wire clicked in and if you see over here it's facing down and it's like just that much off okay so it's got to face down um, to follow a line or obviously at the back to we don't actually use this to reverse the line because you've got you remember we've only got limited ports that we can use to measure data and we've got to make sure that whatever we use is effective so then rather put a touch sensor at the back so that you can use your multi-purpose color sensor to follow a line and detect a line. Um, you've got to make it work for you. All right. Um, and so whatever you're using your robot for, that will determine how you're going to connect it. Either down, but it's got to be rigid. It's got to have connectors and it's got to have beams. All right. If you want to do the ambient light, then it's usually facing up. Okay. And so it'll capture this light around here. Um, color insulation tape is the most an amazing learning tool. All right. So if you have a if you have a, um, a surface or if you have an old robotics challenge mat and you just turn it around, that's white, and you just put different insulation tape pieces of insulation tape down, and then get learners to follow on the left hand side and on the right hand side. Follow red, follow blue, follow black. Okay. Um, it's a good exercise, and then they must be able to explain. Okay, so here's the other thing. If you are looking to detect a line, and the line is very thin, and you go very fast, then the chances are that this little color sensor is not going to pick it up. All right, so rather try and detect a block of color, okay? Um, but when you're doing color sensing, go slower rather than faster. Okay. Um, ambient light, 
you've got to make sure that it can detect. You can't have it on the side of the robot where it doesn't get the light. If you want to detect a ambient light, it's got to be up so you can see it, all right? And you can test it by shining a torch and then making sure that the light will make the robot stop. So the measurement that your color sensor gets. Sorry? That is has smooth. All right. Thank you. All right. So um, I'll show you just now how to read a minimum and a maximum value um, in your range from 0 to 100. But 0 is usually your absolute minimum and 100 is your absolute maximum. So then the threshold value is like halfway in between. So that is then your 50. All right. And so that's your threshold value. So when you're writing your code, um, all right, let's first do this. Let's first detect the color. So there's the program starts. You set your movements to B and C, and you set your movement to 50 percent power. Not very fast. All right. So now your robot's going do 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 do. Okay, and it must repeat until repeat until what must it repeat until it must move. All right, so it must carry on moving until what? Until the color sensor in port number three is black. And then what must it do? Well, then the repeat will stop. And they'll come out the loop and they'll say stop and they should exit your program. And so just on that note, this is um, this is the hamburger. So this is the, the top part and this is the end part. And um, I say with full respect to Sylvia, this is what Sylvia calls the hamburger effect. All right. You put your roll at the top and you put your other one at the bottom and everything else. Otherwise, you have only half a hamburger and then everything doesn't put together. So good idea. The hamburger principle. OK, so that's detected color. All right. So now, if you're going to follow a line, you're going to follow it either on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, but we're going to follow it today on the left-hand side, all right? So we're assuming that our robot, uh, let's take this robot here, ding, ding, ding. I don't know what you're seeing, but it's our robot, and we're going forward, and this is B, and this is C. All right, so here we're going to go forward, and we've got to repeat until, look here, we've got to repeat until what? Until the touch sensor is pressed. Okay, so the robot's going to follow the line until the touch sensor is pressed. I don't have a touch sensor on here, but I'll put one on for tomorrow's demonstration. Okay, so it says, look at the color sensor in port number three. And if it's less than 50, so if, if it's less than 50, then you are kind of towards the center of the road. Then you must get off the road. So then B must go lower power and C must go high power. So it must go this way. All right. However, if you are seeing the 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 else part of if it's less than 50, it means if it's greater than 50. So if it's greater than 50, you're seeing mostly white. If you're seeing mostly white, you're off the road. So then this wheel must move in and this wheel must go less power. So this one is going to go greater power and this one is going to less power. And then it moves in. So it'll zigzag, zigzag, zigzag all along the road. All right. And I'll show you tomorrow that it works. Okay. Okay. So obviously, um, there's a lot of reference about following the line and stopping at the line and crossing intersections. These are all parts of it. But your first and foremost is you need to ensure that your learners understand how to follow the line. Okay. Um, just by way of extra introduction, if you're following your line on the left-hand side and you're using the left-hand color sensor to follow the line, then you'll use your right-hand um, color sensor to detect intersection. That's just FYI. All right. And that is the end of color sensing. And really, I can, I can talk and talk and talk, but I really think um, the most important part is that you practice you have to practice everything and i'm not and i'm not going to demonstrate now. i'm going to leave it for you to go and think about it and then we'll demonstrate first thing when we start tomorrow how do you control your robot with just input from one sensor a touch sensor from two sensors a touch sensor an ultrasonic sensor and from three sensors at the same time your color sensor your touch sensor and then your uh, ultrasonic oh, no. hi Oh, I thought that was somebody. All right. Any questions? Anything that you that I need to answer? Anything that's not clear? Anybody? If 
Anybody has a question, please feel free to raise your hand. Hi. Hi, Dr. Chris. I see um, Gloria is, uh, uh, is unmuted. If you want to maybe ask a question. Hi, Gloria. Hi, how are you? I'm good, and you? I'm good. I was <coughs> having um, a lot shedding. It's okay. It's okay. I didn't have the whole session with you. Okay. Well, well there will there is a recording uh, of last month's session M2 Unit 2 already on the YouTube channel, but today's recording will be available at the latest next Monday. Okay. Or oh, next Monday. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Um, Gloria, are you on the? Um, have you already discovered the MOOC portal where all the content is? Yes. Okay, that's sorted. Excellent, excellent, great stuff. <clears throat> okay, you Tabu, your hand is up. Welcome. Tabu? Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. I love I love being in inspired environments. Hi, Tabu. <laughs> yes. Uh, I I'm taking you back to last week, uh, Dr. Host where you were talking about uh, the, the submissions, the uh, reports that you need to have weekly. You, Is you this got to do with M2? I, yes, I think it's in relation to M2. I don't know whether it's in general all uh, the, the MOOCs or it is in relation to M2. There's somewhere where you said you would like to have um, reports weekly. Okay, so that, um, Tabo, that is the for the grant holders only. Can we discuss that on Friday in the grant holders meeting? Oh, it's fine. Then I'll ask that. All right, cool. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. All right. Okay, so so really, what I would like you to do today, um, and I'm assuming that everybody has this. Uh, yes, Pandili. Yes. Uh, Doc, uh, there's a challenge with us here. We haven't been, I mean, we haven't seen the group yet that we're supposed to be added on. I've sent the, the list to Mariska and she said she okay. added us on the group, but we are not there in the group, so we don't have any new group. So that's where we now we'll find out we we'll miss some things, because maybe the links are sent into to the group. And then we are no, we are not aware of. So don't. Okay, let me just ask Mariska quickly. Uh, sure. Okay, you want the Eastern Cape group? Yeah. No, no. We want to be to be in the in the main group that you are having. The, okay. The, the, okay. The, the, the group that you are there, you are having. Okay, so she must send the you. Main group. Also send Pendile and I invite. Yeah, that's thing is fine. Invite to coaches group. Okay, I sure. will send it. I've sent it now to her. Her team left last night, so she's been very busy, and she's helping me quickly try and get the Limpopo um, competition sorted. So we're we're a little bit busy, but I'm sure she will do it. She's just ticked. It. Yes. Okay. No problem. I think. All right. Excellent. Okay, so that's that problem solved and addressed. Excellent. All right. Nao. Hi, Nao. Hi, doctor. Um. Uh Please explain. I would like to be part of the group as well. How to get into the group and all that. Thank you. Okay, so which group do you want to be, Naya? The Northwest one. The Northwest one. Okay, yes. so um, are you a grant holder? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, yeah. so um, I'm just trying to think how we're going to get your information to you. Um, Otherwise, also we can add it on maybe on the educator, on the educator group. That's an idea. That's an idea. All right. Just um, Nao. Yes. You need to send me your cell number um, on the ICET mail group and say you want okay. to join the north. Sorry. On the northwest group. Okay. Thank you, Doc. And then I'll send you an invite to join the group. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very much pleasure. Uh, hopefully you'll become a coach soon. All right, I've just asked um, 
Mariska for the invite to the Northwest group as well. Okay. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Any got anybody more questions? Okay. Uh, yes, Portia again. Hi, Portia. Yes. Uh, I, I heard that uh, there is a census that are detecting the color for the movement of the road. So yes. I wanted to know because it seems like there are two types of sensors that we have shown in the two different robots. So yes. both of them, for them to have an access to mobility, there must be a color coding setup for it to be able to move around the environment, meaning the color should be set according to the environmental color. Um, do you mean that the measurement is red? Correctly. Uh, what I'm saying is, let me make an, an example. Uh, the environment that I'm setting the robot to move on, it has a white or a cream white tile. Okay. So now for a sensor to be able to move, should I have to use the very same color as the tile or there is a different way of using the sensors to cooperate with the colors? No, what you'll do is you'll let the robot just move, just move, and you'll maybe put a line down and say move until you find the line, and then I must stop. Okay. Okay. Um, I think Portia, if, um, if you can start looking through all the material, I will set up a, d a demonstration for you tomorrow. Unfortunately, Tomelo and Cabello aren't in the mm. hub at the moment, but I will send up a demonstration table for us for tomorrow, and then it'll all become clear, I promise. Oh. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, so what? Just a, a, as a as a kind of um, the robot will move. You can send it out and to do number of rotations, or you can say just move forward. Just keep moving forward. What we're introducing sensors for is to say you can keep moving forward until something happens. So until you see an obstacle in front of you, until you see a black line on the road, until you detect the color red, until move forward until. All right. It just makes the robot look a little bit more clever. OK. Excellent. OK, now I I'm promise I, I probably going to do something terrible to this name. Hoitsi Molimo. Hoitsi Molimo. How's that? Perfect. That's it. Ah! <laughs> awesome. That's Hello. it. Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, Doc, uh, um, it's my first time to attend this program. Okay. okay. And I'm in Johannesburg. I hear that there are groups. Okay. Is it possible for me to join uh, one of the group, if ever there is a group in Johannesburg okay. or is in Houghton? There is a group. Um, so also you can listen, you send me an email and say you want to join the coaches group. Um, we are going to have, it's good that you're in Joburg. We're going to have some practical sessions at the UNISA Science Engagement Center. Um, and in that center, um, there will probably be other um, groups from around in the surroundings. And so maybe you'll be able to network with them there. But I think okay. the most important thing is if you get onto our mailing list. Um, and so if you send me, an, if you send, I set an email um, and just say you would like to join the groups, and you'd like to be on the mailing list, then um, that's a good start. All right. Okay, thank you. So are you a teacher? Yes. And you're teaching currently? Yes, I am and teaching does, currently. And does your school actually have robotics? Does it have a plan? Uh, we are planning to. Uh, actually, I'm the, I'm, I'm the first one to actually try to engage on it. And so I'm trying to get as much as possible the information on it so that I can start I can kick start on it at our school kick start is the word all right then we need to just kick start something happening at your school all right <laughs> okay Thank excellent you. okay stay well excellent uh, I'm Thank liking you. this we've got lots of schools starting up all right but I also suggest that you just watch m1 first so that you're not totally overwhelmed okay right. okay Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Sure. 
I'll just ask, is there, are there any other questions? If anybody has a question, has a question, please feel free to raise your hand. Ah, yes, we have a hand. Yes, you can, yeah. Mocha lady. Hi. Oh, no, the microphone's, uh, mic I have microphone problem seems like that, Chris. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Mokhaledi, you want to unmute? I see you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Maybe just type in, oh, the chat is not available for this. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. Ah, yes, we can Hi. hear you now. We heard you. No? Um, Miss Gloria? Hi, Gloria. Yes. Hi, Prof. So the network uh, keeps going on to the next. I just want to find out, ne? I have Arduino Uno uh, kit with the software. Is it compulsory for me, like, to download other softwares? It, nothing is compulsory in this world. We're a democracy. Does the, do these lessons help you teach that robotics kit as well? No, in fact, I'm the one who uh, joined late, ne? I attended yeah. uh, last week. So I just wanted to find out if I can use uh, the Arduino Uno for all the activities. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We just got to start this whole, we just got to start this robotics process. Okay. Okay, thank you. Excellent. You, um, and let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear from feedback from you. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, that that problem solved. Gloria, you had your hand up, and then we we um you put your hand down again. Hi, Gloria. No, it's it. I floor it. It was an old okay. hand. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Okay. <laughs> high five. Okay. All right. Okay. So with no more questions, um. We, we are aware that the chat is not available. We have to do, we're trying to do something about that as well. Um, but thank you everybody for being with us today. Um, I, I realize it's an overload and census is such a huge chunk of, of learning. Um, but I, I'm now going to let you just read through, go download the overview document, just read through everything that has to be done and then come with some questions. We'll do the first part of tomorrow um, session. We will start with a dem I'll set up a demonstration table here, and then we can kind of go through um, the robots, how they move, um, how you can program the robot to do different things. And um, I'm going to hopefully, I, I don't know, Casper's busy, so I, I don't know. Oh, let's see what, what we can do. But let's see whether we can have some some practical robots. If you have a robot with you, and you want to you want to kind of show how how well behaved your robot is, we'd love to see it. Um, and we are really encouraged to join in then. Okay. All right. If there are no other questions, I don't see any more hands. No. All right. I see Pandili is coming in again, but it's all good. All right. We will have the recording available as soon as possible. But in the meantime, go through the material and see whether you really grasp the concepts. And and please come with your questions tomorrow so that we can we can iron them out. And then let's make these robots more. Um, Intelligent sensor data. All right. I see we've got people still coming in and the lesson is finished, but it's okay. All right. If there, yes, we see your hand is up. Yes, yes, uh, Dr. Ross. I just wanted to know would you advise uh, someone to to register for your one of your short ESET courses, like your introduction to, to robotics and all those short courses? Because I, I, I've gone through just to look at the syllabus. They are pretty good. So would you advise like teachers to do those courses? Because they are not that expensive. Thank you. Thank you, Wissi. I appreciate that. I would really like for everybody to finish M1, M2, and M3 first. Mala. Okay. 
and get the practical experience and then your short learning programs will be an enriching experience i can guarantee you that yes okay yes. all right okay thanks right. Okay. i can keep you busy for, for a whole lifetime of robotics and education i promise okay <laughs> <laughs> okay thanks all right but keep okay. up with us on the on the m1 and m2 m3 and yeah. the environmental science robotics and so there's lots of learning happening and it's really an exciting space yes now, and can I ask you the last question here? Uh, the content of, of those short courses, uh, is it uh, different from what we're learning from the M1 or M2, M3? What's the difference between these, these two? They, um, first of all, your, your short learning programs have, a, have assignments, four assignments and an exam. Um, and okay. then there's much more reading. So we go into the literature and there's much more reading um, to be done for that, yes. Okay. Whereas the MOOCs are really, um, and I'll tell you where the, where the concept comes from. We realize the teachers are very busy. And for yes. expect teachers to go on this like really almost vertical learning curve in a short learning program of 15 weeks with no extensions, no flexibility, that's asking a lot. And so yes. I've had several teachers saying, I just cannot. All right. And that's not fair. So. What we created is this MOOC portal with engagement. We can talk about it. You can join communities. You can work through it with your learners, but that the teachers are competent, that they know what they're doing and confident. And then we'll do the short learning programs. Then it's then it's an enriching experience and it's a pleasure, uh, a cool learning experience. Oh, okay. um, all right. Yeah. yeah, thanks for the advice. Thanks. Yeah. So okay. I will just, just stick to the M1, M2, and once I'm confident, then I will register for the short courses there. Yes, yes. And then do first, you first do components and uh, pedagogy, and then you do debugging data and pr problem solving data and debugging. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thanks. I was about to ask, I, I forgot, which, which one should you do first? Because there's components, then there's this problem I'll solving one now. Yeah. First do the components, then you do problem solving, then you do robotics fundamentals, which is like going yeah. out, out into the real world. And then once okay. you're in the real world, then we're going to explore the future. Right. Okay, that's nice. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. Absolute pleasure, Wussi. Okay. I look forward to meeting some of you, especially Wussi, uh, Pendile one day. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a good meeting. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for a really, but uh, we see your old hand. You're good. You're good. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. Melindy. Hi, Melindy. Hi, hi. How are you? How are you, Mr. Oh, I'm, well yourself. I'm all right. Uh, do we have any like support groups with regards to the assessment that we, will, uh, we need to complete? Are there um, any support where, are you, where are you calling from? Devon. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, hi, Rafilo. Uh, Melindy, yes, we do. We're in Durban because we've got a couple of schools that are doing robotics in Durban. In Umlazi. Uh, north. I must go and look at my map. I'm not sure of Durban so, so much. We've got a, we've got 12 schools in Mpangeni. Mm -hmm. Is that too far north? Uh, that's that's far. You no, know, you know, Melindy. Um, mm. I know exactly who you, you can contact. Okay, I'm listening. Um, <laughs> um, um, now I know exactly. So can you send me an email? Okay, I'll do that. Send me an email. There's a group at um, at Winston Primary School. Uh, can you please repeat that? At Winston Primary. Western. Okay. I think Winston. W I N S T O N. Winston. Was it Winston Park? Winston Park. All right. Okay. But otherwise, send me an email and I'll put you into contact with the group that's there. Okay. okay, thank thank you very much. No, no, we're not doing solo. We we need to be strong in, in masses here. Okay. All right. Okay. And then one more question, Pandile, yes. No. 
My, my, my question is still on, on, on my problem, the one, the old problem, the, the one of problem. my submission. <laughs> that I'm old going problem. to do it right now with you, Pandile. All right. Oh, but, okay. But, but everybody else has left. I'm going to sort out your problem now. Great. Please. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So if you can just stay after the meeting, we can quickly sort it out. All right. Okay. All right. I'll. I'll Okay, all right. And Sorry, Dr. Host, do I send the email to the same uh, email address I says? I said at unisa.ac.za, yes. Okay, thanks. And you can just address it. You want to sp uh, please pass on to Dr. Host. We have a whole team answering emails, but that one must come to me. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Cool. Okay. Um, I just need to interrupt quickly. Casper, do you want to quickly explain what's happening here? So here, I just want to show everyone because we don't have the chat at the moment. So here is the I said you need email address on your screen now. Unfortunately, I cannot show where all the, all the other links um, what to type on. But if you go to our YouTube channel, you can access all our other uh, links on the in the about section. There we go. There. So right. the email. Thanks for that, Casper. Thank you so much. Excellent. All right, maybe just leave it up for a while. Thanks. All right, everybody. Uh, it's been a hectic group, but thank you very much. Let's get those robots moving. And then I'm going to see whether I can help and electrically sort out um, one of these submission documents. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Stay well, and we will see you tomorrow. And I will have.